everyone, and welcome back to this episode of the Stitch Sessions. And, oh, hold on for one second. It's a bit sunny out here today. Oh, let me see. Ah, there we go. That's better. As you can see, I'm in my summer crochet office, I like to call it. This is the family farm that I love spending time at in the summer. It's just beautiful and I love being under this tree and hanging out with you guys at the same time. Um, anyway, so I've got my sunglasses on and I had them kept nicely safe in my sunglass case. And actually that is the project we are gonna work on today. And I had them inside my nifty a beach tote. And some of you may recognize this from our last Life's a Beach crochet segment where we worked on the beach tote. So if you're curious about this tutorial and you missed that, I will leave a link for it in the description box down below. So, but on to business. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this sunglasses case. Now, especially when we go to the beach, you know, sunglasses are the things that get thrown to the bottom of the bag, mixed in umbrellas and clothes and the between the seats of cars and stuff. So, you know, this is generally why I do not buy expensive sunglasses because a, a lot of them get kicked around. So the case I thought would be, number one, it's an easier way for you to look in your bag and find them instead of having to dig and, and, and hope that they're not being crushed. But number two, just also to protect them from just like being scratched and scuffed at least. Um, and as you can see here, I have my fun little heart-shaped glasses. I got these up at Sobble Beach, which is my other favorite place to be. Um, so yeah, a sunglass case is a really quick and fairly easy crochet project uh, that you can whip up, especially for those of you that are beginners, but looking for some more creative projects to work on. Now the stitch we used in this project is what we call the crossed single crochet stitch. And if any of you have seen our mittens tutorial from about two winters ago, I used that stitch to create those mittens. And of course, if you're curious about that tutorial, I will leave a link for that in the description box down below as well. And just to add a little bit of interest, we have used the bobble stitch here to create a little bit of fine detail, um, just to kind of elevate the piece. And it is created all in one piece. And uh, again, you don't need to add the bobble stitch if you still find it a little bit daunting. You can create this project just, just using simple single crochets even. So this is a project that anyone can do. And uh, I plan on whipping a few of these up because I've got a couple of uh, pairs of sunglasses lying around that I like to uh, grab and go, so to speak. So that's what we're gonna run and do now. Now, before we go inside, make sure to click that subscribe button because a lot of you that are hanging out with me are not subscribed. And when you're subscribed, you are always up to date every time I upload a new video, anytime there's something new going on, if I have a post where I'm letting you know about, you know, a sale on my Etsy shop or things like that. And in fact, you should check out the website, which is crochetcrafty.com and sign up for my newsletter. I have a monthly newsletter and I gift you all a free written pattern in that newsletter every month, just as a thank you for coming out and hanging out with me. And uh, I am also slowly starting to build up the stock in the Etsy shop with my written patterns. So they take a little bit of extra time, but you will find uh, that I am starting to stock more patterns in there. I know some of you have been asking me about written patterns, I am getting there. So in the meantime, let's uh, go inside and get all of our materials together and work on stitching up our sunglasses case. Okay guys, here we go. So these are all the materials you're gonna need to create your sunglasses case. And I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more of an up close look here. I've got my trusty sunglasses in there. So I used cotton yarn for this project. I really like using 100% cotton for anything that may have to spend a lot of time outdoors or in possibly moisture. So I find cotton is the best thing. So what I'm gonna do, so the yarn I'm gonna be using is Bernat's Handicrafter Cotton. And um, you can use any, any facsimile. In fact, you can use any yarn you like. I just happen to really, really like using cotton. So this is a medium 
weight four yarn and it is 100% cotton. They generally come in 50 gram balls. Sometimes you find them in 42.5 gram balls. It's a funny, funny size. Um, you won't need a whole one. I have leftovers, so that's what I'm going to be using. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, for the little bobble stitch embellishment here, I'm just going to use a slightly different color. So I'm not sure what is going to be what, but I'm going to start off with my coral and then probably accent it with a little bit of the blue and basically just use up my yarn until it's done. Okay, so that's the yarn. The hook size I'm using for this project is a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a size nine. You can use, of course, a size six if you want your stitches to sit a little looser. Some people even use a size five, which is generally what's recommended for this yarn, but I'm gonna use a 5.5. Okay, and as always, make sure you have a pair of scissors and a darning needle on hand to sew in your ends at the end, okay? So let's begin. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by using my coral color first. And we're gonna start off by placing a slip knot on our hook. And I'm gonna start off with a chain row of 24 chains. Now my case is seven inches in length or approximately 18 centimeters. Um, may even be considered a bit too long, but I think it's just perfect. Fits a nice pair of sunglasses in there. So 24 chains is what I'm going to begin with. Once you have your 24 chains, you're going to have something that looks like that. Just make sure it's not twisted at all. And now what we're going to do is you're going to find the second chain from the hook. Remember, we never count the loop on the hook. So we have one and two, and we're going to place a single crochet into that stitch. And in fact, that is what we're going to do into each and every single stitch all the way across. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so now for the next row what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn our work and we're going to go right back into the very first stitch there, it's right there, and we're just going to place a single crochet into that stitch. So that's how we're going to begin this row. Now into the next stitch is where we're going to create our first bobble. Now I like to call this basically creating three unresolved double crochet stitches. So I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to yarn over and insert your hook into the very next stitch and pull up a loop. Just like you would do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Now. Normally you would yarn over and pull through the rest, but we are not going to. We're going to leave that double crochet unresolved. We're then going to yarn over and place our hook back into that stitch and do that again. You'll yarn over and only pull through the first two stitches, just like that. Now you'll notice you have three loops remaining on your hook. We're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, back into the same stitch, pull up a loop, and you're only going to pull through the first two loops only. Now a traditional bobble will do this, most people will do this anywhere from three all the way up to five times, and a lot of times you will see the one with five unresolved double crochets in there. Um, it's quite a yarn eater for this type of stitch, so I've just decided to do mine with three, okay, but you can choose however many you like depending on the look that you're going for. Once you've got the three unresolved double crochets, you're going to yarn over and this is where we're going to pull through all four of the loops on your hook. This actually creates a cluster stitch, okay? So what's going to happen is now into the very next stitch, you're going to insert your hook and simply put a single crochet. And you can see what that does to the previous cluster. It crunches it down, and that's what creates the bobble. And there it is there. 
So the bobble gets created on the other side. So we actually work this stitch from behind, from the back of our work. So that is simply what you're going to do to repeat. So into the next stitch, we're going to create our bobble again. So you'll insert, create the first unresolved double crochet, yarn over, insert back into the same one, create the second unresolved double crochet, yarn over one more time, and create the third unresolved double crochet stitch, just like that, okay? Yarn over, pull through all four, and then you're going to go to the very next stitch and single crochet to create your bobble. Just like that, okay? So now when I turn it over, you can see it's got this nice puffy texture there. So that is what you're going to do. You're going to repeat that all the way to the end. So I just did a single crochet. So you're basically going to do bobble, single, bobble, single, all the way to the end. Into the very last stitch, you will be doing a single crochet. But I'll meet back up with you when you've got one stitch left. Okay, so I've just created the last cluster here. I've got one stitch left and into that stitch I'm going to single crochet to finish off my row. Okay, so your work will look something like this when you turn it around. So this is our bobble stitch. Now if you wanted to, you could create the whole case with the bobbles, but I just felt that it's just going to be a bit much. We just wanted that nice little accent there. So now what I'm going to do for this second case is I'm actually going to change colors. I'm going to bring in this, this aqua blue color here and also because I am running low on this coral color. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to snip my yarn okay, and fasten off there. And now we're going to continue on with the stitch we're going to be using for the rest of this project. So what I'm going to do is I will turn my work so the bobbles are now facing the front and I'm going to insert my hook right into that last stitch there. Okay, And I'm just going to pull through my new color. Now as always you can start with a slip knot on your hook. Sometimes I do actually most of the time I do, but there are the odd times when I do not. I just slip it through just like that and then I will chain one. And sometimes I just find it's a smoother transition and then you can sew in that little end later. And this will not go anywhere, okay? So now what we're going to do is we are going to use our single crochet stitch with a little bit of a twist. So like I mentioned in the intro, I talked about how in one of our other tutorials we use the crossed single crochet stitch and um, that's what we're going to use for this case. So right now we're going to go right back into the same stitch and traditionally for a single crochet you just kind of hook the yarn and pull it through and traditionally how we do it is we want to yarn over. Okay, So that means the, the yarn is going to come towards you. But in the crossed single crochet, we want to yarn under. So you see the difference? Yarn over, yarn under. That means the hook is the one that's on top. And this little change, when you pull it through, will create a difference in how your single crochet sits. Now you're not going to notice it right away in the first one. We yarn over and pull through as usual. Okay. So now that's what you're going to do all the way down the row here. So let's do that again. Into the next stitch, which is going to be a little bit wider because that's where the bobble was. You'll insert your hook and remember it's the hook over the yarn, not the other way around. So you want to hook the yarn over, pull through, and then pull through. So now if you can see that, see how it's sitting a little bit more crossed? As you do subsequent rows, this little X shape becomes much more prominent. So I'll do that again. Into the next stitch, which is right there. I'm going to hook over the yarn, pull it through, 
yarn over and then pull it through. So you can see that X is slowly starting to take shape. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that here. So you can see the little X's along the way there. It's, it's a minor detail, but it's just a little something that makes the stitch sit a little differently. See, and it creates this really beautiful ridged effect there. So I'm gonna do that one more time. Insert your hook, hook over, pull through, yarn over and pull through, okay? And so right now the new color is being integrated in. So that's all you're going to do all the way to the end. Okay, once you've completed row three, your work will look something like this. And I love how I can see that new color coming in there. So now what you're going to do is you're going to simply repeat row three for a total of 25 rows. Now, if you find that your um, case maybe is a little too snug, you can do 26 rows. Um, I believe I did 26 rows in this one and I could have afforded to do one less row. Keep in mind, um, especially because this is gonna be going to the beach and places like that, you're gonna throw this in the wash take into effect shrinkage, right? So sometimes when you put items in the wash, they eventually over time will shrink down a little bit. So I'm gonna do 25 rows for this one, okay? So at the end of each row from now on, you're gonna chain one, turn your work, and now you're gonna go back into that same stitch, the very beginning, and you're going to insert, remember you're always hooking over for this project, except right there where you yarn over as usual, okay? Into the next stitch, you insert your hook and you always begin with the hook over and then the yarn over. One more time, insert, hook over, and there you have it. Okay, so again, it's a very subtle effect. See how it's twisting to create an X? It's a very, very, very subtle effect, but I like how it creates a really cool texture. So that's it, guys. I'm gonna leave you to finish your rows. So once you hit your 25 rows, I will meet up with you then, and we'll talk about constructing your case. Okay, so I have completed the length I need for my case. Now, I had done 25 rows, but then I undid it and brought it down to 24 rows, and I'm gonna tell you why. So this is the front side of my work. I wanna make sure that the bobbles are pushing towards me. And so I actually stopped after 24 rows because now we're gonna do the trim row up the sides, around the top, and down the bottom, and then at the end, we're gonna do one more row across, which will give us our 25 rows. This way, the trim row, the front of your stitches will stay facing the front of your work. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so at the end of the 24th row, that's my last stitch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain one, and I'm just gonna turn my work. So now I'm gonna work into the sides of these rows, okay? So I've chained one, and now I'm gonna go back into that same stitch where I put my last stitch, and I'm gonna do another stitch. Now remember, we're hooking over, single crochet, oops. So see, it just helps it kind of curve around the bend there. So basically you can see there's a bump and a dip, the bump and a dip. And so we're going to place a stitch into, I'm gonna to try to do every bump and every dip because they each represent a row. And, um, but as I go along, I'm just gonna to gauge to see how I like the look. If it starts bunching up too much, it means that I don't have enough stitches but usually it's because I have too many stitches. So I just wanna make sure that I catch a few loops in there. Okay, so I wanna kinda of get in through here. There we go. Hook over, pull through. Okay, and now 
the next one will be right about here. So again, you're just going to eyeball, see what looks good to you. As long as the edge is nice and smooth, that's what we want. So I'm going to go in here. Now you can dip down. I try to keep it as close to the proper edge as possible. If I can. Otherwise, just place it where it sits comfortably like I did there. Then I'll stop, I'll look at my work. So if I like, if that edge is sitting nice and flat, then I'm pretty happy with that, okay? And that's pretty much what you're gonna do up the side. And when you get to the edge, I'll just meet up with you there just to help you curve around there, but then you've got proper stitches to work into and you'll go all the way around. So just go up this side here, and for those of you that are a little bit newer, I'll meet up with you in a few seconds to show you that little corner there. Okay, so I've gone up along the side there, so I'm pretty happy with how it's sitting. And of course it's bowing out a little bit as it is wont to do. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come up along the side here. Now remember the bobble stitches, we were using double crochet stitches. So we're most likely gonna put at least two stitches into the side here before we get to that very first chain. So I just wanted to go over that. So, but again, you're just gonna find a spot that looks good you can nestle it in to a few loops, I would recommend that. Otherwise, if it's beginning too testy, just go into the space there. Okay, so there's one. And actually, I'm going to go right away into that one there because I don't want the stitches to bunch up. Okay, just like that. So now it's taking you right to the edge and we want to come around the bend here. So usually we place three stitches in any corner, especially single crochet. So I'm going to go back into that same stitch. Whoops. I'm going to put a second one and then I'm actually going to put a third one right back in there. Okay, so you see it just helps to round out really nice and smoothly. And I'm actually going to work over that tail. Now this, remember, this is our foundation chain row that's at the bottom here. So now I'm just going to insert into each chain across. Okay, again, working over that tail. And I'm just going to proceed to do this whole finishing round all the way around. Okay, so it's a little bit easier to find the stitches here. Okay, I just love how that aqua contrasts against that coral color. Just love that. So again, one stitch into each all the way across. When you get to the last one, it's three into that last stitch. It helps you come around the corner. Then you do one into the side of each row or however many you need into the side of each to make it look nice and smooth. And then you'll come around here and you'll do the final row across at the end, okay? So I'll meet up with you once you finish the other three sides. Okay, so I have come to the end of my trim here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to fold this down. So this is how my case is going to look. I just love that contrast there. All right now, I did it specifically at this spot because I knew this is the side that I wanted as my opening. So this way, now I haven't cut my yarn yet. Um, so this way I can just start sewing and then continue right to the edge. So I just want to gauge here before I snip off my yarn how much I'll need. And I usually like to double the length, kind of follow the shape there, and a little bit. Now I'll snip off my yarn. And that should give me plenty to sew up my case with. Whoops. Oh boy, almost lost my stitch there. Let's go ahead and fasten that off there. Okay, just like that. All right, and this is where we take our darning needle. And we thread our yarn and we're ready to go. So now you may, depending on how evenly you stitched your rows, you may end up having one or two more stitches from one side than the other. And actually, 
um, that's not going to be a big deal because for a, sun, a, a glasses case, like sometimes, like this one, you see how you have that little lip kind of over? You will find this actually very commonly in glasses cases and it just, I guess, makes it easy to kind of open and things like that. So this is a perfect time where if you were a little bit off in your count, it's not going to be the end of the world, okay? So what you want to do is you just want to make sure, maybe if your bottom is here, you want to just have these two sides nicely together. And so I will indeed have a little bit of a lip and I am okay with that. So I'm going to start here and we're just going to do what I call an in and out weave stitch. So I'm going to start from here and I'm just going to match up my yarn needle there with this stitch right there. Okay. So these are the stitches that went around the corner. That's why there's a few little extras protruding. So that's not the end of the world. And for this particular design, I want the stitching to not necessarily be obvious, but I'm not worried about hiding it. In fact, I'm using the same color, so it probably will be hidden. But I did debate whether or not to use the coral color to actually show the stitching as a contrast which in this one you can see a little bit too, and I, I kind of liked it, but it was a little bit more of a subtle contrast. So for this one, I actually wanted it to blend in a little bit more, but you can choose to do whatever you like. So I come out and then I go back in into the next stitch and I match it up with the one right behind it. So just wanna make sure, whoops, there it is there. Okay, and that's what you're gonna do all the way down. So you go, in through the front, out from the back, and then you go in from the back, there's the next stitch there, and then out through the front. Now the only thing with using the same color is you have to be really aware of where is the stitch you just worked into. So you see I'm just pressing these two sides together, next stitch is there, and the matching one is right there. Okay, so I'm just going to weave that through. In and out, just like that. Okay, and see it actually disappears right into there. And that's all you're gonna do all the way down. You'll go around the bend and right to the end there. And then you're pretty much done. All right, I'm at the very end. And I'm just gonna tie off here, just like that. And then, I still, actually I got quite a bit here. So I'm just going to feed it back through the inside there a little bit. Just to lock it in place. And then I'm gonna feed it back through the inside. Just like that. And then I'm just going to snip my yarn. So I'm going to turn it inside out. So normally when we do sewing projects, we, the, we sew them inside out and then turn them right side in. But because we wanted our stitches, you may want your stitches to show, or if yours blend in like mine, it's not really going to make a difference but I actually wanted to show the seamed side outside. So there you have it guys, and my nifty pair of glasses, one of my favorite pairs, and there you go. And there we have it guys, your beachy sunglasses case. I love how these colors came together. I hope that you found this just as easy as I did to do, and maybe you'll have some fun with um, your color combinations. Remember, take me on Instagram. I love seeing your color combos. A few of you have been uh, re showing me some of your granny rectangles, and I just love, love the creativity that's coming out there. So uh, what color are you planning on doing your sunglasses case? This would also make for a great uh, vacation accessory gift. Maybe somebody's going away on a honeymoon or something. Just a little add-on. Something homemade, made from the heart, and very useful. So that is our sunglasses case. 
which will go great with your beach tote, by the way. If you have any further questions, make sure to leave them for me in the comment box down below. And as always, you know you can reach me at info at crochetcrafty.com. And uh, come on over and visit us on the website, crochetcrafty.com. Uh, and sign up for our newsletter, check out some of our interactive live online classes, all that fun stuff, and let's stay connected, okay? And remember, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. Come hang out with me every week as I uh, take you along on my crochet journey. I love having you guys come along and comment and give suggestions and all of that fun stuff. So in the meantime, as always, Take very good care of yourselves. Happy crocheting. Have an amazing day. Stay cool this summer. And I will see you guys in the next session. Take care.